I'm here for you to tell me what you need. Uh, look, this one's dirty. This is my best. <laughs> Boy, I'm trying. This one's yours. Let's get the photo off here. Let's see how I grab this one. That's what we do it. There we go. Got the pictures that you need. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And we're delighted to be able to do this today. Only invest we have to invest USA. We do this all across the country, but uh, now more than ever, we're doing this in honor of the first responders that we've had for the last two weeks. You know, we've lost. I say we've lost. We had 435 in the last two weeks. Either been injured or killed because sure. of looting. So they need them. This is an active shooter vest, and of course, you know, the difference between active shooters and the what we call the concealable vest. Concealable vest will only stop the sidearm. Uh, this will stop anything that's out there. And, uh, and see how old is your vest you got on there? Uh, this one, the one I'm wearing, mm -hmm. uh, it's right about the time I got Renz, so maybe a year and a half. Year and a half. Year and a half. So they have a, not only an expiration date on them, but they have to be tested every so often they, for they, stitching and things like that. They, they do. Here, here's where the technology has, has gone, is con uh, concealable vests have to be replaced every five years. Uh -huh. Because you know their panels are usually made from Kevlar or some composite. Uh, the active shooter vest here with the titanium plates in it never has to be replaced. Um, so now that's the steel you plates. Hit. Unless it gets here. <laughs> <laughs> and I told you I've even hit, hit one with a 50 cal. It, it, yeah. it, it, it didn't. But you still would want to replace it. But um, that's just the uh, titanium plates inside. Now, like you said, the carrier itself. You know, you buy it every four or five years. Yeah. They just stitch it only lasts for so long. Right, right. But the plates themselves. It's interesting how we came up with this concept. We, uh, this level of protection, of course, you know, we use in flak jackets, you know, in, in, in the military. The problem with the flak jackets is those plates are actually uh, 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 they're, yeah, ceramic. Yeah, ceramic. Ceramic, ceramic. ceramic. And what we found out in the Middle East or overseas, you throw we have people that throw the vest in the in the vehicle, then throw their ammo on top of it, and ammo's you know hundred hundred as well. It would crack those ceramic ones, and then they they're, they're not useful once they're cracked. You can't crack this; it's titanium. So the Department of Defense is now asking that we replace all theirs, but they we need to take care of our first responders first. There's only so much to go around, so this is a national crisis. We have, I told people when we started Invest is that um, Invest USA, at the time we started it, back 20 years ago, there were only concealable vests. We had roughly 52% of officers didn't have a vest 20 years ago, didn't have any vest. We got that down to roughly about 25%. Now officers still, you'd be amazed, but even small agencies like Pine Ridge, because of the tax base, sometimes have difficulty in getting used to concealable. But we got it down to 25% and then people on the street started going from sidearms to automatic weapons, rifles, and they just concealed, we just won't, won't handle that. Yeah. So we had to come up with this new technology and now we got 92% of officers across the country that don't have active shooter vest. So our goal is to make sure every officer in America has an active shooter vest. There was a time and date when we only put active shooter vests on SWAT team members. But those days are gone. You just have no idea who you're encountering out there nowadays and uh, you don't get a second chance. So now, how many have y'all done since Invest started? We've done over 6,000 vests. And it started here in South Carolina? It started right? here in Columbia, 1993. We've done over 6,000 vests and uh, counting. I uh, say, so, you know, we're getting a lot of, obviously, you know, with what's going on in the country today, we're getting a lot, a lot of people. I checked calls from California, Santa Monica, a place I would have at least expected because I thought Santa Monica had money, but they're, they're in dire age, in dire shape. And it's uh, very frustrating to hear these officers. I get calls from the officers that say, look, you know, we want to come home with our family. Okay. So how can people help you if they want to donate? They can go to our website, investusa.org, and there's a donation button. My, I, I publicize my number. I'm not ashamed to get calls. They can call my number, 803, local number 556-2528. And uh, I think it's important nowadays that we demonstrate our support for our first responders. Never have we seen in history an attack on our own shores. I tell people that, you know, we have a great military and I have served and support, but now we're on the front line is here in this country. And our first responders are the thin blue line that's keeping us in check. And if we don't get out behind them pretty soon, 
blue line's gonna collapse. So this is what we need. They need these, 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 these um, vests. They deserve all lives matter. I tell people, it's not black lives, it's not yellow lives, all lives matter. But we have to protect those who protect us. And we're honored to do that today. We appreciate very much the local media because you help us get the story out. Chief, what would this have cost you if you hadn't put it in your budget? <laughs> um, well, this, to put in comparison, the vest I'm wearing now, it doesn't have plates, it's soft armor. Um, this vest alone, and not counting any of the stuff on it, just the carrier and the, and the panels in it, uh, was roughly around anywhere between four and seven hundred dollars. And so this add on to that because of the plates, what that would cost for the department to go out and actually buy plates. I have my own personal vest with plates in them uh, at my house, and I think I paid for two plates and the carrier it's in. I think I paid right around. Almost a thousand dollars. Yeah, the, these run us a thousand a piece, and that's yeah, we're doing it all across the country, so that's that's wholesale price. Sure, sure. Um, and and Chief, you, been, you got a you got a part time officer, or another full time officer. Where's that one? Uh, I do. My two part timers, uh, they have, and I believe before I was the interim chief, I believe it was from y'all as well. Right. Uh, another vest that so both my part timers are covered which they cover my night shift right now since I, I don't have another full-time officer. So I'd rather them have the two, the two vests in their vehicles, you know, during the night shift when things are a little bit more out of hand. Um, <laughs> right. And like I said, I have a personal one. So if I have to put that one in my vehicle outside of this, then I will, I'd rather them guys have these with them, which they, it will definitely help. Very much so. And you were telling me that uh, some organization is donating one to Renz and he's next on the list. What's yes. the name of that organization? Uh, that would be Protecting Canine Heroes. Um, it's a nonprofit, national nonprofit organization, uh, basically for um, military and police working dogs. I believe they tailored the majority of their business towards police canines. They, um, they provided first aid equipment for me for Renz, and now a ballistic vest for him. So they've saved us a little part with a lot of money, these guys and- Yeah, and the invest in K-9 Heroes has, has tr dramatically helped out the, the town with the limited budget we have for for supplies. We're doing this all across the country. We're doing one in the morning with uh, Cameron PD. Which is a teeny little department down in Orange County. They have absolutely no equipment, and we're giving them a few vests as well. But the point I stress to people nowadays is it's not just Atlanta PD, LAPD, NYPD. I mean, it is the small agencies that are caught right in the middle of all this. Yeah. And uh, they're the ones that need our help most desperately. Although I'm surprised they get a call from NYPD. I mean, we get, because of the fact technology is so new, they're trying to get their hands on on these kind of vests. You know. Has the whole federal been good to you about getting to you a large quantities at the time when they can? Yeah, they have. Yeah. That's good. We have priority. Party status, so That's good. just to make sure. Because I, I tell people I do this. You know, we've had a TV show called Bulletproof. Um, that we, we, we've aired, and um, I tell people on the show, you know, uh, you have no idea what they go through, what we pay them, what we ask them to do. They don't do it for any of that. They do it for they do it for the heart, the mission. They truly believe in the cause, and it's hard to find people like that. And um, it's getting hard. It's going to get real hard. Unless we, unless we as a, unless we do our job as a community, and step back and say, you know what, you are appreciated. We do want to take as much effort and time to get you home to your families, as you do in protecting our families. And until we as a community rally together to express that message, uh, it's going to get worse, not better. Yeah. So, help us help them. You know, when officers go in, whether it be Florida, California, here, active shooters alert, alert started a big. The majority of the active shooter training, I've attended a couple of alert classes, um, and everywhere you go, the policies, procedures, SOPs, whatever you want to call them, they're the same for active shooters. There's, there's no, at the lack, at the risk of sounding a little harsh, there's no diplomacy with an active shooter. It's you've the taken lives, you're know, continuing to take like lives. Yeah. We're going to stop you before you take any more. Right. Sure. So these would be thrown on right as we're pulling up on the scene getting from the incident commander what's going on these get taken off these get put on and 
Awesome. And all that equipment there can go right on that. It can. It's all equipped with the Molly system. Right. Everything on here can Snap strap right, right to it. Yeah. Gotcha. Uh, the only difference would be, you know, honestly, that quick that things are happening, if there's nothing on this, this is going to come out on the clip on my belt. This is going to stay here. And we're rolling out into the, into the school or building, wherever it is. And probably a long gun or two would be brought in as well.